Hello. Well, in this film, I'm going to be making a leather tool case, and it's actually for my bowl turning hooks. Now, you may remember I forged these in an earlier film, and they're proving great for making bowls, but the tips are quite delicate. So I thought, right, I need, do need to protect these, and also I don't want to injure new one when they're in transit. So I'm going to make a nice tool roll out of leather to transport these and store them in. And I've got some nice blue leather for this one. This blue one, it's quite a nice colour of blue. It's a, like a distressed leather. My rough idea will be to make like a series of pockets for each tool. So there'll be another piece of leather which will come over here. And then I'll be stitching that down to make these pockets. And then there'll be a flap that will come over the actual tips as well. But a bit like a chisel roll, but on a giant scale really. One of the first jobs is actually to square up the leather. And I find these rules are very good actually, these um, cutting rules with the thicker edge. I think I use them in the stained glass film actually. And um, I'm using a rotary cutter, which again, quite a nice simple tool, but quite easy to use actually. And I'm using a cutting mat and it's got a grid line on it. So it's so much easier with these, you can just line them up and then cut away to your heart's content. Now as this leather is only about one and a half millimetres, if that actually, um, one could sew it on a, a strong sewing machine, a, a domestic sewing machine. So, I mean, for example, here is a Singer 201K. Now, the 201K has a, a rotary hook shuttle and it can go through a lot more sort of tougher material than most other domestic Singer machines or other, you know, domestic machines. It is a good, strong machine and it, it will take it actually, more or less. I mean, the other option is to use a patching machine like the one I showed you in one of my other videos. Um, today I'm going to be using my old friend, my Singer 133. And this is quite a tough um, bit of machinery. I always like to get a little test strip just underway just to make sure my thread tensions are right. And I've put some thread in the bobbin, etc. So I'm, I think this is pretty close to where I want it to be. But let's just sort of check how it is. This uh, machine has a clutch, so it's not not bad actually all in all it's called a walking foot machine so that's quite good for leather working just want to make sure that this is the same tension top and bottom yeah, it's coming through slightly, so I do need to just take my top tension up the tiniest bit. Won't be much. Well, I can't really use pins when one's actually joining pieces of leather, so I often use these um, little cements, leather cement, which does the job. And the other thing I find pretty useful are little clips. So with this one, I'm just going to give this long seam a little bit of cement just to stop it stretching really as I sew. And I'll sort of put the clips on as well and that way I think it will cover it. Right, clips in position, so let that glue dry. It dries very quickly actually, and then I'll get the machine down that one. And once I've got one of my sort of seams done, so I've got a large bottom seam done, it's far easier. I don't bother gluing the other seams, but if you set off sort of straight on the right way, you know, you're okay. Well, I now have one very large sort of envelope, and my next step is to make the pocket so to actually sew down these seams so I've got pockets for the handles. And I've just been sort of placing them there just to check measurements and going for three and a half inch gaps. So that means eight tools and I've marked in chalk where the tool, well, sorry, where the stitching lines are going. And quite importantly, I've also marked on the background bit of leather where those lines would be just so I can make sure I've got them properly lined up once I've got this on the machine. So I've got my cloth nicely lined up now and all flat and I've got these marks lining up here. So I'm just going to start there and then oops 
one more. Right, needle in, lift up, and I'm going to reverse that round. So what I'm doing basically is doing a few stitches one way, and then I'll do a few, well, do, do the proper sewing the other way, but that just stops it un, coming undone easily. So I'll now go down my line. I've now sewn up the main pocket seams. Well, I put up a film about pyrography and burning onto leather. And so what I've done, the little bit of work from that project, I've actually stuck it with some leather glue onto here. And I'm just gonna stitch around the edge. And surprisingly, <laughs> I should have done this actually before I sewed this panel on, but I didn't. So anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my Singer 201K. Now these 201Ks, are really very robust little machines and for something like this they will manage to go through it's fairly thin veg tan but they, they are stunning really it's reputed that Rolls-Royce Motors used them for stitching their seats because it was the only machine that could actually give a nice uh, sort of finish I don't know if that's true or not but I do like it as a machine and it's certainly for what I call a domestic machine a very powerful machine it's amazing really um, and they're dirt cheap to buy, they really are. So if you want a basic sewing machine, it doesn't do anything fancy, but what it does, it does well. It's very nice. I'm just using a point needle on this actually. I have got some leather needles for this one, but it, it's amazing what it will get through with the point needles. It helps to have glued this down first because otherwise this leather would be puckering all over the place. One of the things I do like about these older machines is you've got quite a good bit of clearance underneath the arm and um, that's quite helpful. Some of them, the newer machines, are a bit limited under the arm. Though they have a lot of other good features about them, so I'm, I'm not knocking them at all. But I mean, I say this one was dirt cheap. UK, £26. I've actually got a zipper foot on this at the moment, but it's quite nice because you can actually see what you're doing a bit better from the standard foot. So there you are, that's that sewn on. So as you can see, it's a very quiet machine. It is wonderfully engineered. It just became too expensive to produce. So and when it, I say when it first came out, price of a motor car, about 19, I think it was about 1930 it first came out. And it went on till about 1965. And um, it was an expensive machine in its day. Well, I've just been doing a quick test fit of the turning chisels in the roll and they are fitting quite well, actually. So I'm quite pleased with that. And then there's a flap that comes over them to protect them. And the idea is it rolls up just like a tool roll. Now what I want to do next is actually put some straps on. So, I want something in the way of a strap to go around, one there probably and one there, to hold it. So I've got some quite nice little buckles that I'll be using. And I've just done a little mock-up just to test it. So I'm going to knock up a couple of straps next and then probably rivet them on. I hope you've been enjoying watching this tool roll being made. With the straps, I want to actually spend a bit of time doing those. And I'm going to put some nice um, burnt crease edges down the sides of the straps. So I'll pop that up as a separate film and it's worth it actually spending a bit of time with straps because if you can get straps right you can do belts and it opens up so many possibilities. So anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this one and if you want to have a look at how the straps are made, have a look at the next film. Okay, thanks then.